All right, we are live, and the New York Mets just may be giving us a baseball season this year. Just may be giving us a baseball season this year. And if the Mets are giving us a baseball season, you know what we need. We need our Coors Light in our holsters ready to rock and roll because it is the beer that keeps you chill, whether you are uh, – in Atlanta with your B squad bullpen trying to hold on to a lead, or you have a comeback that just may fall short, whatever it may be, the goods, the bad, the Mets, or no matter what it is, Coors Light is there for you in the spring, the summer, and God willing the fall when the Mets are still playing. So if you're looking to chill, that's why you got to choose yourself a Coors Light. When you embrace the chill mindset, it's a good time to choose chill and crack open a Coors Light. They've been with us since the beginning, and they'll be with us one day when we're eating cake, drinking punch at the parade. I almost said drinking cake and eating punch. Shout out to me for not doing that. So when you choose to rise above it all, choose chill, choose Coors Light, get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash believe. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Everyone has a little bit more life in their eyes. And I think it's because we were rained out last night. Oh, it's because we've had several rain outs. Get those cores up, Phil. Get those cores up. Woo, baby. Drink it during your, your rain delays. Drink it when it's postponed. Drink it when the game is on. Wins, losses. Otherwise, get your cores light. Yeah, we haven't had to watch as much Mets baseball as we expected. So, yeah, we have a smile on our face. <laughs> These boys are fresh right now. These boys are Dude, fresh. It, it really is. It is comical. And this is why no matter how much I talk shit about the Mets fan base and say that they are one of the worst fan bases in all of sports, and they are, they also simultaneously are somehow the best because one single goddamn win against the Braves, one, and people were like, I don't know, man. Maybe we broke these guys off. These guys can play. A win in which it took Tyrone Taylor catching it on the warning track from ripping our hearts out. I was going to say, I was going to bring it up. We might as well do it now. I I have a mea culpa. I have to make amends. I, Tyrone Taylor was kind of the, uh, the guy that I, I kind of had in the crosshairs uh, during my console. And it's really, it was not about him. It's more about like what he represented, but completely hand up. Uh, honestly, he's playing at a level right now that had I not been an asshole, I would be calling him my guy. But I obviously can't. I can't. I know. I'm a man of honor. I can't say he's my guy after I trashed him. But he's like the only thing that has been consistent and enjoyable and like trying and not complaining and whiny. And like he just goes out there and does it, has a walk off, has a game saving catch, a couple, a couple big RBIs, some extra base hits. Like, He's been the only thing really enjoyable to watch. So Tyrone, I am, and, and you know what I really liked? I really liked his post game, you know, on the field after the walk off that interview. He just was like a very mild mannered guy and gave respect to Pete. And like I really, actually, really like that guy. And it's a shame because he'd be a great, like you know, role player or or you know, uh, utility guy on a great team. Instead, we are like relying on him to win us our ball games, which is probably going to be a little bit too much for him to shoulder. But I do have to apologize to him because he's been the only fun thing to watch this week. Don't you apologize to him. His name is Tyrone Taylor. It just sounds – it's just like one of those names that you're just like, Tyrone Taylor is batting cleanup for us right now. <laughs> and he sounds like also a guy who would be more of a – and he goes up and robs that ball, and he brought me life. And I said it I, – I jokingly said in game one of the doubleheader – uh, the other day, I was like, ah, oh, Tyrone Taylor didn't come through in the clutch like I always expect him to. Yeah. And then he, he comes did. through in the clutch, shuts my fucking mouth up, and then comes through in the field. So maybe Tyrone Taylor is the player of the season for the New York Mets. I mean, Steve Marwiner, you've been wiped off the back of the <laughs> down the Tyrone Taylor season. He would be, well, he's even better than this, but like he'd be our Janko or like the guys yeah. that, you know, he'd be the fun guy. He's playing really a lot better than that right now. But uh, but yeah, that 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 it's a shame to see like oh that's the guy we'd be like making a t-shirt for right now or doing something stupid for him you know, uh, him and DJ Stewart like saving the day it's like yeah who had that on their fucking bingo card I will say though that that catch while impressive it was not like that was not like at the wall gonna be a home run but every single per and it really wasn't even close it was like a warning track ball you know. Every single person, it proves just how much the Mets are like a cursed, shitty team. 
because every single person in the world thought that was gone. I mean, Ozuna was doing the Carlton Fisk. He was doing the fucking I, SNY guy. I mean, everybody. Everybody was – well, because we all expected it. We were, I was on the group chat. Like, we know what's coming. And then he hits that. I was like, there it is. And, you know, the camera, the voice, Gary, everybody was like, that ball is so far gone <laughs> because you just expect it. And somehow, some way, you know, it, it, it fell about three feet short. It was still a great catch. But it wasn't like it was out of the park. And everybody thought it was because that's the fucking Mets. Phil, uh, for, Phil, let me get your thoughts about Tyrone Taylor before he was a Met. Since you're the only sick fuck who's right. You know, I you know, wait, you know about Tyrone Taylor before the Mets? <laughs> I'm guaranteeing you does, Kevin. I'm guaranteeing that. Yeah, Phil, he had a home you run. sick bastard. <laughs> He had a home run in the wild card uh, series versus the D-backs last All year. Right. He does have some pop that we haven't seen yet, so hopefully okay. we see that. But he's always been like a solid fourth outfielder that can like flash a little bit. Yeah, Making things sure. a little dicey for my guy, Harrison Bader, because he's not my guy right now. And like, okay. that's the quickest way to the top, if you're a Mets fan, is like you're the guy who's just below the guy. Yeah. Every time Harrison Bader's in there, like, what the fuck are we doing? Holy. Like, we need Tyrone Taylor. Every time DJ Stewart's in the lineup, what the fuck are we doing? We need Tyrone Taylor. Basically, anybody but those two. And I think everybody would be happy, but it just so happens it's him. So, But you know what happens is then you put Tyrone Taylor in every day. And you put Harrison Bader. But it's like, exactly. You just want to be the folk hero. Yeah. yeah. Building the plane out of the black box. It's like right. it sounds good in theory. It's literally <laughs> impossible to do it. If you did it, you'd crash and burn like we would yeah. if we had nine Tyrone but, Taylors. But, uh, but like Harrison Bader, in my mind, does not have enough slack. Like he doesn't deserve all the slack in the world to like just keep trotting him out there. Like he's the same level as Tyrone Taylor in my mind. Like if he's good at bats the other game, but like he's absolutely a defensive replacement. If he's in there every game, it's like we're not going anywhere. Kyle, I want to do this to you respectfully. So this this, 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 this is being our, our re to pet to you. I am counseling Harrison Bader until he grows his hair long again. Until he grows his hair yeah, long. He needs a little lettuce. You can't be like high and tight on the Mets. This is Yankees Harrison Bader. Yeah, I yeah, did not sign true. up for Yankees Harrison That's Bader. True. If like if Darth Vader comes over, like when Darth Vader was you know, spoiler for Return of the Jedi, that's fucking 44 years old, 41 years old at this point. He, Luke doesn't bring him out of the Death Star with his fucking mascot. Mask comes off. Need to grow the lettuce back. Give me the Vader that I was fearing with the Cardinals, at least. That's yeah. the kind of that's a Mets guy to us, right? Yeah. Like he said he has the beer growing, get the lettuce back. But until then, Kunsel, dead to me, Tyrone Taylor. The whole team, until the whole team just embraces being like scumbags, I don't think we're ever going to make it. We just got to be like, you know, Keith Hernandez smoking a cig in the, in the dugout. Like, that's who the Mets need to be. And the only time they won it was when they embraced it. And we've just been running away from our reputation all these years. Just be New York dirt balls. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, that's kind of what the, the Knicks have become again. It's like they, they're, you know, defense <laughs> and just like, you know, tough – what do they say? Blue collar, tough guys. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah. It's all the bullshit. That, um, all, all those fucking phrases. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all the stuff that Joe Judge said. And then people are like, uh, you know, like New York City is like one of the richest places. And then, you know, Long Island, the Gold Coast, Westchester, Greenwich. It's like, what are you guys talking about? But yeah, embrace it. You're the scumbags of the fucking uh, of the city. Uh, compared to the Yankees, and then the entire baseball world laughs at us. So just be the bad kids on the block. The fucking yeah, redhead yeah. that has to beat people up. Right. Um, I'm looking right now. Harrison Bader is in the lineup today. Batting ninth, though, so at least we've, we've made progress on that front. Um, Bill, let's check in on your pulse. That, uh, like, I feel like this is your house of horrors. That's one thing that goes throughout the generations. Kevin and I growing up all the way down to Meek Phil now, the youngest guy on the podcast. There was that one season, half a season, three quarters of a season in 2022, where I was like, oh, man, I love hitting balls off the chop house. Remember how fun it was? Just being like, oh, yeah. let's see if peeking at the chop house today. Yeah, there was a that series in July where Lindor oh. threw a homer off of Charlie Remember Moore. that five-game sweep? Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> it was, it was, there was a time where we actually beat the Braves, and yeah. uh, then they won 17 in the next 20. So we have to speak about that. <laughs> Is that really the number of, of what going it into being? Monday night? It was seventeen to twenty. Holy shit, man! Oh, that was a wild year. A wild year. Marcelo Zuna still being on the Braves, still just can't believe. It. Like every time that guy takes a swing, which like, by the way, how is he still there? I mean, <laughs> oh, people say like, oh, he got that strike three call. Oh, that's bullshit. It's like, it, if anyone deserves a strike three to go against them, it's that guy. That fucking piece of <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do the bad guy segment of the podcast. Uh, OJ Simpson dead today. 
rest in no peace to the juice. Um, Kev, you were you? Uh, do you remember the '94 finals when the with the the Broncos? Crazy. Crazy. I do remember that. I remember that, watching that, it at my buddy's house. I, wish I don't I'm know. A little if bit older remember. because I, I I I remember it. I was in my grandfather. We had you know I saw my grandparents lived in New York a lot, but I have a set of grandparents in in like uh, the sticks in Pennsylvania that I didn't see as often. So I remember vividly being at his house because his house was from like the 1700s. It was like the oldest old man house in the world. And I was watching on one of those like, remember when like they had TVs that were like also furniture, like wooden, like fucking, it was like the oldest television in the world. And I remember watching the Knicks with the picture and picture and all that shit. But I was only what? I was nine. So, you know, uh, still didn't like fully grasp, you know, the Knicks in the finals and this guy's a murderer and all that shit. But yeah, wild man. Yeah, absolutely. Kyle, you, you probably don't remember that thing. You're, you're no, I was, I was that. too young. I do remember, like, the, not the car chase, obviously, but, like, the wall-to-wall coverage. Everybody in America was watching that, so I do remember it being on TV. It's a great 30 for 30 if you want to I was to just going to say, Made in America, won an Oscar. Yeah, it's a really good one if you want to, like, kind of get the details of it. And then there's also the uh, the other one the about the everything the, that happened that day. Made in the Garden. It's uh, June 17th, 1994. All the shit that mm-hmm. happened that yep. day. It was the Rangers had their parade. Knicks were playing game five of the NBA Finals. OJ car chase. Uh, the World Cup, I believe, kicked off in the U.S. Uh, there wow. was just like a, a – a, what's his name? Um, I think Nicholas was having a run at, in the Masters. It was banana. Land. Or it wasn't yeah. – what was it? The U.S. Open? Whatever. It's an absolutely crazy 30 for 30 as well. So Who was the um, guy that was calling the Nick game – that it was friends with OJ, and he said that he was trying to call him from the white Bronco. Probably Marv Albert, no? Is that who it was? I mean, he was that was that, he was calling the Knicks games. Yeah, at that point, maybe it was a color man. I don't or... know who did the um, uh, NBC. Costas, yeah. Bob Costas. Yes, it was Costas. Yeah, Costas. Yeah, crazy. I'm trying to call him. That's funny. Uh, Arnold uh, Arnold Palmer was playing his final round in the U.S. Open, um, '94 World Cup commencement, Rangers parade. Game five of the NBA Finals. Ken Griffey tying Babe Ruth's record for most home runs before June thirtieth, and the OJ Chase. Just an absolutely wild. Like we talk about days on Twitter, and I think everyone always comes back to if Twitter was around, this would have been like the most yeah crazy, well, I mean, hilarious, wild. Like five really cool sports moments, and then a murderer. Yeah, straight up fucking murderer, and the memes today. I actually think today is very muted compared to again what it would have been ten years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, 2014 bars. Well, I'm gonna kick out of. I know it's the family talking, but I love the tweet saying, "You know, we ask for respect for our family at this time." But well, you know, he didn't really respect other people's families, so yeah, maybe <laughs> exactly. not. You know that I love my movie facts. There was a pitch script for Forrest Gump two that would have had him in the back hiding in OJ's white Ford Bronco. That was an actual script that was pitched oh, wow. with Tom Hanks attached. In the and he was in the car, in the car with him, like in the back hatchback. Up and was like, oh no, and gets that. That's could you imagine? Ridiculous, dude. Ridiculous. <laughs> By the way, I mean, I, I remember asking like older people because, like, you know, he was in OJ, was in all these movies as well, in, in like Naked Gun and all these commercials and shit. And like, I remember my uncles being like, it would be like if The Rock. Like committed double murder. Like he was that. He was a great athlete and a and like a superstar. So I mean, it is just crazy that like the level of like everybody knows him now as the murderer because he's a fucking murderer. But at that time, he really was like that high of a celebrity. Yep. So uh, fuck OJ Simpson, fuck Ozuna, Ozuna from the Braves, as as Meek will always tweet out periodically. Fuck them all, to hell, and fuck the Braves. Uh, fuck John Rocker. Yes, oh, fuck John Rocker. We have the seven line uh, jerseys or whatever are coming out at some point. What when is that uh, game going to be played? Next, well, 26. next Friday is when the but next Friday is when the jerseys come out, and we okay. don't know if there are teams that haven't gotten their City Connect jerseys on time yet this year. So we don't even know if we'll have them for the twenty sixth. Uh, I've the, never been less confident, so I'm just going to be surprised if they're nice. Like I'm not going in thinking like, oh, that's something I got to get. There's no way it's going to get it. Right. I'm sure. We will botch this. Yeah. hundred percent going to botch it. The thing is, do we botch it so comically that it becomes funny? In right. Like, 30 Mercury years? Mets. Yeah, like, yeah. The Mercury yeah. Mets jersey is one of the promotions this year, which right. Barstool the ballpark, uh, we've heard back from our rep. Uh, he's now going to read a sound the last 48 hours since he said, oh, it was a 
uh, I believe a software issue. So I don't know what that means. So uh, I'm going to put that one in the in the in the file, a tickler file. A little. Uh, I had a software issue. That's why I couldn't get back to you. Sorry. <laughs> um, Took me two days to respond to your text. It was a software issue. I kind of want to do. The, I either want the jerseys to be awesome or to be so comically bad that they're yeah. like mean. That's, that's always. That's hey. That's the Mets, baby. I either that's want life. them to be awesome or comically bad. <laughs> That's how we fucking roll here, baby. Uh, that first game was everything I I was like could have ever hoped for out of like this team. Mendoza would have been on the hot seat if they lose that game, though. If you don't put Diaz in, even though it's like the smart move and you can get injury, because then if Diaz comes in and either blows it or gets hurt, then everyone wants him fired anyway. But that was the all time pins and needles game, and I do have to say, it, he, he fucking it was a roller, it was a fucking it was a crazy ride. But that was Phil's boy who came through in, in the, oh, in the Jorge Lopez is fucking batting practice. The fact he got three <laughs> outs somehow is a miracle. Yes. Like, every ball was either at the warning track that or just crazy. a base hit. And you had Ke- Kellenic on deck. you telling me if oh. he up in that spot, that is like, that's it. To the moon. Yes. I, mean, I was moon. looking at the batting order. I'm like, it's either going to be Darno to walk us off or Kellenic to walk us yeah. off. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I woke. I said the next morning. I was like, the baseball gods like must have fallen asleep or been watching the national championship game, and then be like, <laughs> like the characters were there. It was Darno to tie it, Kellenic to win it. Like it was all written in the fucking stars, and somehow, some way, they didn't cash it in. And then, of course, the next night, they're like, let's make sure let's correct this. Mets. Yeah. I, I was kind of I was monitoring. I think the Knicks were on that night, so I was going back and forth. And I was like, at some point, I'm just like, well, this Mets game is just going to be over. They come all the way back, get the six to five, peed up, and then strike out. Game over. Is he was it having the him going two for four with the double and home run? Like when he's on a hot streak, he's so streaky yeah. that I was like, oh, he's definitely he hitting. Do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where the he night did. before when yeah. he didn't come yeah. through, I was like, all right, that's Pete when he's on a cold streak. You know, he just yeah. Yeah. Like, gonna that, fuck you. That over. Monday night game was a three and a half hour game in 2024. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was. That was nuts. So everyone's fresh going into today. We'll see what today brings. Um, and boys, we have the best ERA in the NL somehow. I, it's just I, with a, with a no name bullpen of like three people. When both of those, all those guys were out for the game, we were like, "Oh, this is just a." That was uh, crazy when it was like yeah. your, your sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth man are out. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good job lining that up, fuckhead. Like, what yeah. was he? <laughs> I mean, I there are times you just get yourself in like a bind because I get it happens, but like because you got everyone going two innings. Well, right, but it's like I, you know you, you run into this problem where you don't have fucking starting pitching. It's like what, yeah. what 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 do you want me to do? It's either you know we're 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 short on this game or I punted last game. You're not you know fans are gonna hit at you one way or the other. But to be in like a two run game with the Braves and not have your guys like get I'm like just come on just fucking just put them out there just fucking put them out there. But at least we we got we got through it. But uh, I saw enough of Julio Tehran. Those two and two thirds. How about yo? What do you get? Two point five million. So he he got so it was two point five million contract was non guaranteed. He got a prorated. Oh, so, was, so he gets fifty four thousand. Then like another week worth. I of saw that. people saying he got the full two point five. I was like, holy shit! Yeah, that, that would be fucking insane. Uh, so, LOL yeah. Mets. The <laughs> nice out there, for about you two know, innings. pitch some baseball and get fifty grand. Yeah, not a bad day. Literally, day's work. Days I mean, work yeah, I don't think he even had to take a shower after. Actually, I mean, it was a bad day's work. He, he, it was bad, but whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he <laughs> might be a Braves fan when it's all said and done. So he's like, I help. I could help the Braves get a W. But again, somehow, some way, we get through that. We navigate it. So last year, I remember they moved Hot Chavez to the bench, and we're like, that's the reason the hitting sucks. Everything about Hefner was the same last year in terms of title and as far as we know, responsibilities. Right. So we're just going to put off last year was just a hiccup for him because I'm ready to just drink the Hefner Kool-Aid and suck his dick again on this podcast. I mean, it's made. also different pitchers. Like it's At this it's point, true. it's like an entirely new staff outside of Quintana. I, I, I'm, I'm so used to our like no names and new names being bad that it, it never it never even crosses my mind that maybe one day we'll, we'll, we'll get lucky. Like maybe, you know, you just said, Kyle, like it's a bunch of no names in the bullpen. Like that's sometimes for guys like th- for other teams that becomes like their lights out. It's a bunch of no name guys who just they just gel. You pitch the seventh, I pitch the eighth, I pitch the ninth, and we we have you know a lights out bullpen. That just never happens for us. That maybe I don't know. I mean, it's like I have no idea how we have the number one ERA, but 
maybe some of these no names or just new names or scrub names are going to, you know, be a, a, a pleasant surprise instead of always living up to the exact reputation we, you know, we always get. So I, I don't know. Uh, it, helps I, I have, that, but. it helps me have Diaz too. Cause it's like, yeah. Gun to my head, I couldn't tell you who pitched any other inning for the Yankees when they had Mo. Right. I, I don't know. Like, I'm not a Yankee fan, but, like, you need Mariano Rivera. Like, that's the same situation where it's like, this is going to be your inning, but also, like, be prepared to throw any other inning that isn't the final inning. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, like, everybody and then him. So. Right. Yeah. And, listen, hey, there is a case to be made that getting big arms that can just strike you out and you're putting a ton of money, ton of money towards them is actually the worst move in the world. Because I mean, as of this recording, I haven't heard of any fucking elbows being blown out of a star pitcher in the last, you know, a few hours, but I'm sure it's coming by the end of the day at this point. I yeah. mean, it's a I mean, how many, how many, like, uh, how many really like mega pitcher contracts have worked out? In like in sense of like a of a title and yeah, like a, Scherzer. Scherzer, Scherzer always came to mind, right? And then but like after him, Randy Johnson. Yeah, I was well, thinking Randy Johnson. Yeah. That's like twenty years ago now, but yeah, I was thinking yeah. the same thing. It, there's, there's a cutoff. There's a cutoff where you can see value. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Flip. Right, but like that, that was, another one. I guess that was big at the time, but like once we got into the era of like you know a Garrett Cole type contract. Like, I think Max is the one that, like, absolutely was worth it. Strasburg, you know, he just retired. RIP to him. That was, yeah. like, I, I was happy to see uh, our boy Jay Hay from, you know, from Jared's podcast. And now he's, I think he's back with him on Underdog, saying, like, Steven Strasburg should be celebrated as a guy who, like, literally gave up his career for his team. He went, like, balls to the wall in, in that postseason. One of the best ever. Got his team a ring and was never the same again. So I don't want to hear it about like, oh, he signed a big contract and was a bust. Like he, he got you to the promised land and gave up the, the back end of his career for it. But yeah, because because I mean, Verlander was insanely good for the Astros, and that's when we thought he he had fallen off in yeah. Detroit. Yeah, but that he never got like a ten year, three hundred million dollar deal, right? It was always kind of like short things because it was it was always like he was old, but he just kept performing, right? I think they were giving him like maxes for like the three years or, or whatever. Or we got that's also the way gave him a max. It's like that's, that's the way to do it. It's like yeah. I mean, we didn't get there, but like there was a there is an alternate universe where the Mets did have a, a Verlander Astros championship. You know, like they 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 signed the two guys the two guys who worked out for other teams as like old Hall of Famers. If it was like one year earlier or whatever. It would have worked, and then their contracts would have expired, and then you're you're good to go. Like that's the way to do it, because uh, like at this point, you sign an ace, you're going to go through Tommy John. So if you sign him for eight years, you're only getting him for six because you're losing two of them to Tommy John, and then you're really only getting him for four because the back two are gonna suck no matter what. That's like the reality of the situation at this point. It's crazy. So if David Stearns can just figure out to not have those guys and can just find these fucking guys to lead the league in the ERA, you know, with the scrap people we have here, without even saying who's now I saw in the 60-day IL, which I don't know how much that really changes the time frame. I guess it's an indefinite timeline. Fine. Figure yeah. it the fuck out at this point, right? Um, yeah, I mean, like, if, you find, if you have the guy that can do that, you know. He's he, super he, decisive, too. Like, he is DFAing people <laughs> left and right after they pitch for us. He's like, all right, you did your job. Like, we'll see you later. later. On to the next one. Do you feel better or worse about the way the Tehran situation? Because I lost my mind last time. You made me start stuttering. Just like, what are we doing here? How is Julio Tehran your plan? And now it's like, all right, he was just like, fuck it. It's That's what I do in fantasy baseball. It's like, oh, this guy, I know that name. Let me pick him up. Two, two, two thirds, 500. You're like, cut. Next day, he's doing it. I mean, if and if you're only spending 50000 instead of $2.5 million, even with Stevie's checkbook, it's like, I guess at this point, it makes sense, right? You you have a guy you know can do it. Whether or not he does it is another another question. Your five starter, whatever. At this point, we just need innings eaten, so we're not running out for a Lopez to close out games every three games here. That's basically what we're asking, fellas. I'm getting the the call up to uh, unnamed show right now, so I'll be back in a little bit. Oh boy! All right, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Godspeed, sir. Godspeed. Oh man. Um, anything else from this Brave series that we we haven't touched on here? Tehran's gone. Sanga sixty day IL, which felt like we we thought that was coming, right? I think he was always going to be out to like June was always best case, so it doesn't really like change much. It was mm -hmm. retroactive, no? Like they knew they just yeah, like it, 
<clears throat> yeah. I mean, I rain last. I was like, it's two games in rain. It feels like what's just been most of the year. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm mean, fucking rain today. Rain tomorrow. I mean, we can touch <laughs> on the red series. That was like two out of three games that really nothing eventful. We pitched well. We should have slept. Should, should have slept the one game we hit. We couldn't pitch. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that, I'm just like I'm not waiting for the worm to turn on that, but at some point we're all going to start hitting, and then the bullpen's going to go to shit because they've had to carry that's, the load this whole time, and it's just I so mean, frustrating yeah. when that happens. And what we do also need to talk about is should Francisco Lindor just be a righty at this point? Because what we have this every year. <laughs> I mean, he's got two hits lefty, and one of the I don't know I don't know what the first hit was, but the second one was luck, like he got jammed. Yeah, it's so I mean, funny. Because we used to have this same conversation about Carlos Beltran, who is the Francisco Lindor of this generation. It's a premium defensive position. Yeah. He starts slow every fucking year, it seems. And he always is better from one side of the plate than the other. And he you know, has people booing him because of the money he makes. He wasn't homegrown. And then it just becomes a civil war over a guy. And then when it's all said and done, I guarantee people are gonna be like, we miss Lindor when it's all over. You know what? Yeah. The, 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 the Francisco Lindor debate, whatever you want to call it, that is brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. We have a big car coming up on Saturday, UFC 300, and our friends at DraftKings are going to get you this action-packed card. It's taking over Vegas for UFC 300, and DraftKings Sports, with the official sports betting partner of UFC, is giving new customers a shot to turn 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any UFC 300 bet. Phil, are you a UFC guy? I was at a UFC event back in um back in all in August, so that was a fun event. Great atmosphere in Utah. I'm Real dying. I'm dying to go, man. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you were out of Utah there. That was awesome. I'm looking here at the. We got Holly Holm. Holly Holm still fighting now. Didn't realize that. Uh, <laughs> let's see. We got Holly Holm. Uh, let's go. The over under of the rounds of the Holly Holm fight two and a half. There we go. Minus one sixty. I feel like that's a. I'm, I'm, I like that. I like I like that kind of an odds. Let's just go with Holly Holm. I feel like she's getting a little softer as she ages or more. Um, damn, there is a just a goddamn massive card. Bob Fox flying out to Vegas right now, so he's going to be putting his bets in as well. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Believe. New customers can bet five bucks to get one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook. With code believe the crown is yours. I'm still scrolling down. I just can't believe. Wait, Clem, uh, I need you to look something up. What do you need me? What do you need from me? Kyle? What is the line for Nick Castellanos home run today? <laughs> Let's look this up right now. Uh, MLB. This is the move, right? OJ Simpson is dead. <laughs> Uh, let's see the Phillies. Not a bad man myself, but I mean, you can't fight fate if he's up. I I don't hate it, Kyle. I don't hate it one bit. Uh, Nick Castellanos plus four hundred plus four hundred on the DraftKings sportsbook app. I will. I don't hate it, Kyle. I'm just gonna say that I don't hate it one bit. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick Castellanos. That's uh, if you want to dabble, dabble. That's like the, you know, the, the, do you know ball? It's like, it's the cosmos at this point. You're just, you're, you're, you're going with the cosmos on that. Uh, all right. So Francisco Lindor, let's get it started last. So this all started last week. This started again, when we don't have the podcast twice a week, you kind of like going off the old stuff, but it's going to get reinvigorated. Obviously once tomorrow comes and the Mets are back home against the Royals, Francisco Lindor, does he deserve an ovation? Do we do the Trey Turner? Apparently, Brett, ba- Brett Beatty did not get the Trey Turner <laughs> treatment after I kindly asked. My my guy's looking pretty good, flashing a little leather, flashing some wood at the plate, doing pretty good here. I'm feeling a little Nimmo BP revolution started with Brett Beatty. However, Lindor, not the same. Um, Kyle, I know you have a take on this. So, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, I am not. For anyone that wants to give him an ovation, by all means, go ahead and do it. Um, I don't think he needs it. I don't think it's something where it's like it's the the vocal minority that are attacking him online are not like the general consensus of Mets fans. He's not coming into the ballpark and getting booed for the most part. So I don't think that it's like that where we all need to like put on this spectacle to to give him an ovation. I mean, he's paid to do a job. He's doing his job. Yes, he's getting off to a slow start. It's every single season. And every single year, he just he just accepted the Silver Slugger Award. Like, it takes time. It's only 12. This is going to be the 12th game of the season. 
I don't think he needs an ovation 12 games into the fucking season. He's not on some warpath crushing the ball, obviously. But at the same time, like, if you want to give him one, fine. You know what you need to do? You need to stay out of his wife's DMs and stop tagging Steve Cohen in every fucking lineup and complaining about the fact that he's still in the top three in the order. Like, he is the personification of the 2022 Mets that nobody appreciated, where you, sh- you don't realize what you have until it's gone. And when we're going to have to find a new shortstop at some point in the future, you're going to go, wow, he was so solid for us for such a long time that maybe I shouldn't have been an asshole to him for all those years. If you want to give him an ovation, go ahead, but I don't think it's necessary. That's basic. You just told the Carlos Beltran story in so many yeah. ways. It changed the, the I've lived through two days. players who've got dealt with it. <laughs> and, I mean, outside of Beatty and Alvarez, it's not like everyone else has kind of been just bad for the most part. Like, it's not right. like anyone else is – like, Marte is saying 256. He looks somewhat like his old self, but he's not tearing the cover off the ball. Yeah. It's weird how, like, these guys do get held to different standards. I understand, like, he's making the money, but it's like – again, I, I've never heard a player once say – once they started booing me, that's when I turned it around. Like he knows, he knows people don't like him. The DM stuff that is some bush league bull, just bullshit. And this is like I do pray. I I very much like I I liked how the internet. There's you can do stuff where you don't have everything tagged to you. If you were able to slide in someone's DMs and say the shit these people are saying, you should 100% have your government name attached to it. So then you have to wear it in case yeah. it ever does go public and you're some fucking like uh, the shit. Brandon Walker gets you know, said to him and he just puts it out and these people disconnect their account. They're a bunch of fucking cowards. And the people doing that shit to his wife, cowards you're booing. That's one thing, whatever. I think it's, again, I think it's stupid. Um, I, I was getting chirped. I had people tweeting at me about like, Oh, I'm a Lindor Clem. Cause I, I want him to do good right now. Where are you right now? All the Lindorks. And I'm like, I was like, dude, it's like game six of the season. What are we talking? The Mets won the game, too. And I'm like, I, I've said this to Kev. I used to say that. Remember how you say the Mets fans are like cicadas? That once every, like, 15 years, we get we, we like resurrect from the dead. We're good. We're loud. And people can't stand us. And then we basically die. Basically 2022, 2015, 2006. Yeah. Lindorks, you know what they are? They're like fucking gnats. They are the flies that come out in the beginning of the spring when Lindor is sucking because he can't fucking start in April and May. He's always cold. And they just bother you. They bother you. And then they just die off in June, July. And then by the end of the year, like you said, you look, you're like, oh, he went 30-30 and played gold glove defense at shortstop. What are we complaining about here? So the Lindorks are gnats. If I see a Lindor just t- tweeting me, I just hit mute and I don't think about them again the rest of my life. And I just don't understand what this guy is going to have to do for a full season. Like, if you want him to start hot, and then just get cold in June and July because that's basically the only thing that can be different at this point. I was going to say, like, the first two months, like, your first impression means, like, everything for the rest of, like, your career. Like, if, yeah. if he had – if his 2021 was, like, his 2022, we wouldn't be here right now. Like, people would say, like, oh, okay, like, <laughs> yeah. we're, just, we're used to this. The fact that he sta- he came here and started out so bad those two months is why people have it in their head, like, oh, he's just not that good. Yeah, yeah. Like he seemed so beaten down when they started out 0 5, obviously. But like the pressers that he interviews that he was giving after the games, you could tell he was already tired. Like, this is the guy who's supposed to be the ambassador for your team to get other players to want to come here and play. And you're beating him down game after game, night after night. And now you're going after his family. Like, there's a reason why Steve can throw as much money as he wants at some of these guys. If they have a conversation, with our actual players, and they're like, yeah, dude, it sucks here. Like, the fans are, like, ruthless. Like, you want the team to be good, but you also want all the players to want to come here. And those two things have to be in common with each other. Uh, the Like, I saw him tweeting out the other day, like, Diaz is like, oh, I'm hyping my guy up, and this and that. I'm like, it's a week into the fucking season. How have we reached a point where you're, like, going on social media to defend your teammate, who, by the way, Went 30 30 with a gold glove shortstop last year. It's not like he was coming off of a Gary Batty like 150, like Trevor Story kind of stuff. You yeah. Know? He's a good uh, Francisco Lindor is good. I, he also and, does not hide from it. Like he plays every single day. Yeah. And you, you said it, Kyle, the other day. I think you said it in the group chat. The New York like advantage you have by being in New York it's withered away with the internet. Like you said, Giannis can become a star in Milwaukee. He doesn't need to go to a big market if he doesn't want to. He can live very comfortably there and not have people freaking out. Can you imagine if this Otani scandal broke with the Mets? 
it would have just been the pestering and I mean, the media would have blown it up even crazier, but then the fans would have just been incessant about it too. But it happens in LA and everyone's just kind of like, eh, whatever. Uh, or the culture kind of, shock that David Stern, I know David Stern's group of fan, but the culture shock from like, say you were like four and seven or five and seven in Milwaukee compared to five and seven in New York, two wildly different things. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, uh, and, and like, both, we're in the second place, like in the division. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like right, Surpass just said in the in the chat. Doesn't matter performance. Just want to turn the culture around. Like if you want to fucking turn the culture around, it starts with the fans not pissing off the players, so the players can you know recruit other players. And I'm telling you, man, I, you cannot tell me Yamamoto didn't at least think. And I don't know how much he knows about like Mets fans and American fans and the way the baseball dynamics work. It's like I have this group of fans and that group of fans. Dodger fans, they'll kick the shit out of each other, but they're a lot less. They're a lot more laid back than us fucking savages here. And I, I love New York fans for the passion, but like at some point, we've kind of become the Phillies fans used to be looked at. You know, before they won the World Series, now they've won a World Series, and now Citizens Bank is looked at as one of the greatest home field advantages in sports. Right? That was why they were so cocky going into the NLCS against the Diamondbacks at the end there. And if you have I mean, other teams that are aware of Frank and are watching his videos <laughs> after they beat the Mets, you're telling me that the team themselves aren't like getting sharp at some point? Come on. And like that Trey Turner evasion, that was after like a hundred games where he was moved yeah. down to like eighth in the batting order. His OPS was like in the low six hundreds, maybe in the five hundred draw, I can remember, but that would never happen in New York after a hundred games. That t- do you think Lindor was ever close to getting like any praise after those first two months here in 2021? No. Yeah. No. No. I think we were we were like he's good. I'm telling you guys he's good. But even by that point we were just like, come on, Francisco. <laughs> like we're we're dying on the sale right now, man. Then when obviously 2022 happened, we print the shirts. Uh, everything's good until it went really bad at the end there. But it's again I've seen this story before with Beltron, and I just that game on what was that Tuesday night that would have like killed me mm. in any other season. I'm now like a veteran fan where I'm like, that's going to happen. What are you going to do? It fucking absolutely sucks against the Braves, especially, but I'm not going to fucking just like freak out about it. So the same thing with the Lindorks, they're going to come at you. I'll just mute them. They'll, they'll completely be gone. They are the Nats. They're going to bloom. They're, they're the, they're the mayflies, whatever you want to call them. They're just going to get in your face. You're going to be swatting at them. They're not going to hurt you. They're not going to do anything, but they're going to bother the fuck out of you. Every time you're like, Oh yeah, baseball's back. And then you're like, it's like with spring. Oh, spring's back. It's great. Let's go outside. Oh fuck. They got these Nats. It's pollen. Those are the Lindorks. Just brush them off. Hopefully they don't fucking do shit like going to women's DMs, fucking scumbags. Uh, and then, you know, we'll wrap it up with uh, one more little uh, bastard of good news. J.D. Martinez, three to five days, uh, is back. His back's been barking. Did I read somewhere he t- took 200 at-bats or something in the last couple of weeks? Is that true? I have no idea if that's true. But, like, the back, it, the back's been an issue since, like, 2022. I think it was Power Gaza said the Mets would have traded for him in 2022 if not for his back problems. Yep. He had this in LA last year where he took a course, don't shot once it got bad, and then he was good the rest of the year. All star, 30 home runs, 100 RBIs, whatever he had. So he's basically thinking same plan this year. Mm-hmm. How about this? Cortisone shot now, rake like he did till July trade him the fuck away and let the other team deal with that in October, which, hey, I hope we're, we're still playing October, but I know there's other teams who have a better chance to play in October. He can go to one of them. If uh, I'm trying, you said it, Phil, if you take the J and the D, you put a little bit of space between it and you throw an E there. It's Jed. It's Jed yeah. That's... And... <laughs> when I saw fans to think like that though, like, yes, because exactly. we've had it before. And I, I, I said it the minute I was like, Jed Lowry will never have it at bat for the Mets. And I know he, in the records, does. I do not believe it actually ever happened. I think <laughs> it is uh, gaslighting. Is that, I don't know if that's even, the, like, in this term makes sense. But it's like it, people have convinced us that it's happened. I don't think it actually happened. It's like a Mandela effect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, no, no, here's a picture of Jed Lowry as a Mets. Like, no, what player was paid $200 million to not have a single hit in Mets history? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, like, but that was, like, the all-time cursed um, – marriage it's like jed lowry i remember in fantasy every year you'd take him he'd get off to a hot start and then he just wouldn't play there and that was in oakland guys were fucking you know wheeling people out with the mets curse never gonna happen that's why people were like why aren't you guys doing an emergency podcast for jd martinez signing because it's like 36 year old dh he's the opposite of my guy he has to like my guys i will blindly go like brett Beatty. he's gonna turn it around and i'll like harp on it jd martinez has to almost prove to me 
beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's going to be good, be healthy, and like just be a reliable guy in the middle of the lineup. So until that happens, and we're not off to a good start right now. Um, is there anything else around Mets land that I missed on? I think that's about it. I hope uh, Kev's, other than I hope Kev's not getting killed. Good in AAA. That's yes, good. Christian Scott. I saw that Michael Mayer uh, tweeted out. He had like a his his K per nine and his walks per nine and his K to walk uh, ratio was like incredible. So help is coming. Like SNY is uh, is digging deep into the minors this year early too because they're broadcasting the AAA game tonight at six o'clock. So they probably think that the game's getting rained out. They haven't announced it yet as of right now because it's supposed to be what twelve ten. What time are they supposed to play? Twelve twenty. Okay, so the fact that they haven't called it yet is kind of strange, but. We'll see. Hashtag Joe DeMeo season, baby. That's what yep. we're talking about right now. <laughs> 635 SNY, the Syracuse Mets against the Woo Sox. <laughs> I will say, uh, and this doesn't really go as much to the guys who were on the team last year, like McGill and Peterson, but in general, like growing up, I always did like having like a young, I like pitch. I like pitching prospects a lot. Position prospect, I guess because they can only fucking let you down once every five days, where like I just watch a Madrasario go out every single day. He's driving me crazy. Uh, but I, I just like, I get the excitement about that and the fact we got like Vassal and Scott and a couple other guys. That is exciting. So uh, no matter what happens on the field today in Atlanta, we still have those guys in Syracuse, Binghamton, and wherever the fuck. There's guys in like single A right now I have my hopes attached to. No matter what happens in all that, gotta believe. Gotta believe. Gotta believe.